Hello, welcome to Miniature Realms. My name is Stuart and welcome to another painting tutorial. This is for Flames of War British Infantry. It has 15mm scale for those of you who aren't familiar with the game. Now, recently, Battlefront, or the makers of Flames of War, have released Bold British, which is a new forces book and some new models and starter boxes and things. Um, and these models are actually from the new British starter. And I'll pop a little link above for the recent unboxing and review I did of those. Now, you'll see the miniatures are pre-prepared with a zenithal highlight, which is a black with a white um, highlight over the top using an airbrush. I won't go into too much detail about how I do that here. Um, I'll pop another link in now for a video that explains all about that, um, but it does aid some of the natural highlighting for the method I use, which starts with heavily base coated in contrast and army paint as speed paints. Now, first up, we're starting with contrast fire slayer flesh. Now, this goes over really nicely over the pre-highlighted miniature. I don't want to place, put it on too thick, but you'll get a nice natural highlight and shadow placed over the what is very white faces. I made sure that the white was a little bit thicker on the faces and hands to aid this process. Now, for some more contrast, this is Gore Grunt of Fur, and this is perfect for all the stocks and wooden areas on the rifles. Now, for some contrast black legion, this is the slightly richer and darker version of the two contrast blacks and I'm going to be painting the metal areas of the rifles with this colour as well. And um, I will come back and do the boots later, but it's not really important at this stage and I'll talk a little bit about that when I do them later on. Now for Contrast Militarum Green. Now this is for the tops of the helmets. Now this is a little bit tricky. There's a, there's a sort of four stage method I do with these. Um, and you probably could do them very easily just by painting on a flat color and dry brushing. So pick whatever suits you best. But I like to stick with the contrast base coating. This is a little light, but I darken them down later. And again, you'll see that later in the video. Now we're on to Contrast Garak Sewer. This is fast becoming one of my favorite contrast paints. Now, we've, we've done the skin, we've done the helmets, we've done the, the main guns, uh, and now the rest of the miniature, including the boots, um, will be covered in this brown. So I'm not too worried if it goes over onto the boots. It uh, makes it a little bit easier to make sure I don't miss things and, and highlight later on. And like I said, I will add a little bit of back later on. Um, but what you get is this really nice coverage over this, this zenithal highlight. So where there's, you can't see it so well on the camera, but there is still some natural shading in there in the miniature. So it's not just a plain white prime. The white or plain gray will work very well from this. And I've actually done a little dry brush as well, which you'll have seen if you've watched that other video. But it just gives this really, really nice um, coat where you've got this slightly lighter brown towards the top and some nice shadows. And this is a perfect base to then highlight up from, for not only the main uniform, but also the webbing as well. Now, if you wanted to go for a real speed paint, basic table ready miniature this would be perfectly usable at this stage the webbing doesn't really stand out so maybe you could go along and highlight those and add in the boots but by the time you've added basing and things this would be absolutely fine but however to highlight it a little bit further and make it into a sort of a more of a standard tabletop finish so now we move on to model color and this is English uniform. Now the color guides I've been using are from Colors of War, from Flames of War, and I'm using the Vallejo model colors that they suggest in the book themselves for most of these miniatures. Obviously I've based with, with contrast and I do use some other colors throughout, um, but the basic uniform colors to get the matches that, um, that I think look pretty accurate, I'm sticking to the suggestions that they use in those guides. So what I'm doing here is I'm going along and leaving some of the darkest recesses but picking up some of the larger 
highlighted areas of all the main uniform. Now as a highlight to that I'm using a 50-50 mix of the same English uniform and a green ochre also from model colour. Now this is just lighting in it slightly so I can go in and pick out not all of the areas but go around and pick where the, where the light would have hit most it just makes the colour pop a little. Now for some Russian uniform and that's what I start working on the webbing which is a kind of more of a green colour compared to the sort of the brown green of the British uniform of fatigues. So it's going around with the, 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 the rifle straps and then all of the packs and, and parts of, of the webbing um, and picking out those and I'm still again leaving some of that Garak sewer um, where it's at its darkest shade underneath. Um, you, you could have completely blocked this out but then you'd need to go back and wash and the one thing I'm not doing with this method is using any washes on the main part of the miniature. Might use a little bit on the helmets later on and on the metals and things but I don't do any of that with the, with the main uniform to, to, to stop it getting kind of dark and, and murky and, and, and messy. And of course the very next colour I use now is that wash and it's Agrax Earthshade and I'm using this on the tops of the helmets just to really darken them down and try to further pick out the detail that you see with the, with the netting um, on the top of the helmet itself. The reason why I've done this now is so it gives it a little bit of drying time when I go back and do some other parts in between. And now to highlight that web and I'm using a mix of the same Russian uniform 50-50 with the German beige World War II, so you see those there. So 50-50 mix of those just lightens it enough to give it a nice lighter green highlight and again just going back over the rifle straps and the webbing leaving some of the original colour behind I'm just picking out some areas to add that further highlight and make it pop. Now I've grabbed the Contrast Black Legion to go back and just paint the boots in. There's very little showing underneath the trousers and the gaiters anyway. And the way I base, I use a lot of weathering pigments and things. So these will all be dusty anyway, so I won't be looking to highlight these. This is just to slightly darken the colour to make them look like the, the regulation black that they would have been, or so I believe they were. You could leave them brown from the Garrick sewer and you're probably not going to may notice a massive difference. Now next up is to highlight the flesh and I use Noctura Fairy Flesh a lot now but this is quite hard to get hold of often only available in the set and it's not easy to get hold of so a good substitution is basic skin tone from model colour which I'll be using very soon because my fairy flesh is nearly run out. Now just to tone down a few of those highlights a little bit and blend it back in, I'm actually going to use some Gilliman Flesh, which is a contrast paint, um, and just paint it around the bottoms of the jaw lines, around the cuff areas, just to give a little bit of transition between the, the colours, and it just gives a little bit more natural colouring to the skin itself. I'm now going to dry brush Russian uniform onto the tops of the helmets. Um, that just picks up the texture that's already there from the, the netting and the little bits of leaves in that scrim. I'm now picking out those few leaves using some US field drab.
We're going to highlight the stocks and the wooden areas on the rifles and um, machine gun with a little bit of model colour orange brown. Now I don't want to highlight the weapons too much, I want them to look like blued metal, um, but, but Scale 75's black metal is a very, very dark gun metal type of colour, and I'm very, very subtly just brushing on some tiny highlights on some of the very visible areas, so you don't give it that kind of shiny metallic look, but it does look a little bit more than just a flat black there. Now you could go non-metallic there and actually use a grey to do this as well if you wanted to, or as someone suggested as a comment on a previous video, can use a very soft pencil as well that also works but, but may rub off a little bit more and that's it that's done very much a tabletop but that was always the plan um, I'm not going to go through the basing I've done because we all tend to base for our own um, army themes etc though if anyone is really really interested I'm very happy to answer questions in the comments about that um, but I think once all based um, they look they look pretty good and I'll be very happy with them for, for a tabletop army and I'm looking forward to actually painting the rest of the force up in a month or two when I swing around to doing my British project. Thank you very much for watching. I um, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. If you are new, please go and check out the other videos on the channel. There's plenty of painting tutorials on there. There's a growing range of Flames of War videos, um, but there are other topics as well. A lot of epic battles, Napoleonics and American Civil War, and even some Middle Earth stuff on there as well. I'd love to hear from you, so please do comment on the video. Feel free to get in touch on social media as well. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all those other things. And the links are all in the video subscription. I have some German painting tutorials for Flames of War lined up as well. But if you do have any other requests beyond British, American and German, please do give me a shout or any particular um, units or particular tank or something like that. A lot of the skills will be transferable, but I'll be happy to do many more painting tutorials and I'd love to hear what you guys would like to see. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you soon.